I've been involved in organising this event because um, thanks to um, people like David and Alex's work, I've been aware of the uh, Bilderberg meetings for a while. Um, and I went to Channel 4 once during uh, Bilderberg, um, this was a few years ago, and I said, um, why aren't you covering the Bilderberg meeting? And the news anchor, who I won't name, said, oh, you're not one of those, are you? We're all one of those. And we know what's going on in there. And it's thanks to people's, people like David's work. So um, I'm not going to take up any more of your time, um, but I just want to say thank you so much for being here. By the way, the police thought that there'd be about 300 of us. And credit to you. Credit to you for coming out, and taking the time out and, and making, making you your voice heard, it means so much, and I'm glad it's been worthwhile. So I think we're gonna give an enormous round of applause for Mr. David Icke. Thank you. And the people gathered to say, enough! You know, this is a, a historic weekend. This is an historic moment in the history of uncovering the evil and treachery and conspiracy that has directed and misdirected the lives of humanity for thousands of years. And there's a, there's a spirit looking down upon us at the moment. And he's got a big smiling face and he's got a big hat on. And until very recently, we used to know him as Jim Tucker. And Jim, Jim Tucker, decades ago, was on the case when no one had virtually heard of the Bilderberg Group, let alone what it connects to. And I remember in 1995, long time ago now, that I went to my first Bilderberg location. It was in Switzerland, a place called Bergenstock. And Jim did a round-robin email to not too many people in those days saying the Bilderberg meeting this year is in Bergenstock, Switzerland. Story of my life since my head blew off in 1990. Uh, a few weeks earlier, I'd arranged to go and meet and stay with some friends in Switzerland about two hours away. So I went down on the first day it was a big hotel, the three of them, the park, the palace, and the grand. It's like something out of James Bond. And there were the guys with the, with the name tags on and all that stuff, putting the fences up. There was virtually no one there. In terms of protest, no one. Jim must have been around somewhere, but I didn't see him. I then, during the actual event itself, when it started, went back. And this time you couldn't even get onto the mountain, never mind, close to the hotels. Right, right in the far distance, you could not see where they were meeting. That's what happened in those days. Well, symbolism is very, very powerful because it visually gives you a fix on where we are. And Bilderberg and everything that it stands for is no longer at the top of the mountain where we cannot see it. We are in its freaking grounds. And it ain't seen nothing yet. I, uh, I think the best thing that you can do to understand the world and to understand yourself is to realize it ain't you that's mad, it's the world we live in, and it's the people who run it. That's, that's when the penny drops. Because Ow! what we've got is a situation where insanity has become normal. And this is how it happens. You're born into a madhouse, but you're told it's sane. You grow up in a madhouse. There's nothing that you uh, ever see that isn't in the madhouse. 
And so to you, madness is normal. And when someone comes along and says, this ain't normal, this is madness. They say, you're bloody mad. And you know, the mainstream media, you know, bless their cotton socks, are going to have to come to terms very soon with a simple fact that the person they abused and ridiculed for nearly a quarter of a century was the one who was sane and the world they believe in is what is insane. Once we realize that dynamic, the world starts to make sense. The world is upside down and it's full of evil and slaughter and injustice for a simple reason. We, in our sleep up to this point, have allowed evil people to take control of our world. And it's stayed in control through secrecy and by keeping us in ignorance. But suddenly, suddenly, the ignorance is dispersing. And what's left, and what's left is the clarity of the situation we face. We live in a world that's upside down. We live in a world that is mad while masquerading as sanity. And I'll give you an example. It's a very topical one. We're sitting here, right? Or st I'm standing. Um, of the inversion of this world. Sitting here are thousands of loving, caring people who want peace and justice and fairness in the world. Over there is a hotel full of war criminals Parasites, right? Etc. Bankers, need I say more? I think I pronounced it correctly. Bankers. And the police are protecting them from us. Police, you should be protecting us from them. But isn't it, isn't it funny that so often there are some great policemen, there will be some great policemen around here and, and some not very nice ones. This is the way, world we live in. What are you doing? Shall I do a dance to keep you going? Yeah, okay. And uh, so, uh, <laughs> so we have a situation where we, we have police that uh, are very, you know, genuine, although they're being sifted out more and more, and we have police that are not very nice. But what the, f the, the point I'm making here is, the police are not from the elite 1%. The, people, uh, the police are from the people, and yet they gravitate to protect the elite 1%. This is crazy. Police, join us. We are you. You are us. And I'll give you another fantastic inversion. Bombing cities of civilians to protect them from violence. You know, and there's the mainstream, and oh no, it is the Arab Spring is fighting for their freedom. I'll tell you what the Arab Spring is in one single sentence. People with brown faces being played off against people with brown faces so that people with white faces can steal their land. That's what it's about. And we have an inversion in the media so, so much that it, we actually have a newspaper in this country 
but he's owned by a Russian oligarch and a former employee of the KGB, and it calls itself the Independent. The world is crazy and upside down. Most crazy. The characters in there who are dictating our world day after day, year after year, look at them. Kissinger. Kissinger. What did he say? I don't know, mate. I've got a clue. I've never understood the word the bloody man said. And there's Rockefeller and all these people have been on. And then there's Mandelson. Mandelson. For people watching who are not from this country, Peter Lord Mandelson was the puppeteer of uh, Tony Blair, known as the Prince of Darkness, not without bloody reason. He'll be in there tonight at dinner, Mandelson rushing to finish his soup before it clots. You know, have you seen Mandelson? I can't work him out. I've never seen anyone with his nose so far in the air who didn't fall over. He walks around as if he's got a putrid smell under his nose all the time. And of course he has, himself. Oh, Ronaldo, Ronaldo, there's a big pong in here. Yes, you, darling. Because, you know, corruption, conspiracy and sleaze, Peter, does tend to stink to high heaven. And uh, I've looked at the physics of Peter Mandelson. And I can only work out this. He has got to have some kind of counterweight connected to his dick to keep him from falling over. He has got to. That's what it is. But look at him. Lord Mandelson is in that hotel helping to dictate our lives. Do you know something? It's not that the tail uh, is wagging the dog. It's not that the tail's wagging the elephant. The tail's wagging the planet in terms of the number of people who are doing it and the number of people having it done to them. And this is a great moment of enough, enough, enough. And I just want to put this thing into context, not least for the mainstream media, because they, they, what they do is they treat everything as a dot. If you treat everything as a dot, you don't see the picture. So let's put some dots together. First of all, the Bilderberg Group is not the conspiracy. It is a strand in the conspiracy. What we're looking at, dictating our lives, and pushing us on into this Orwellian nightmare that they have planned, forget it, forget it, is that they have a spider and a web structure. The spider in the center of the web is the inner, inner sanctum that no one ever sees, and they dictate, there's very few of them, they dictate through the spider's web. Now, each strand in the web is like uh, a secret society, a corporation. It's an organization of some kind. And immediately around the spider are all the real exclusive ones, some of which don't even have names, because if it doesn't have a name, it's much more uh, difficult to, to pin it down. And it comes out, and it's still in the hidden. And you come through the upper levels of the Jesuits and Opus Dei and uh, of the upper, of real upper levels of the Freemasons and the Knights Templar, all these people, um, and you're coming out, and you're coming out in the hidden. And then there's a point, a cusp, where the hidden comes into the scene, and the Bilderberg Group stands at that point. Before all this work and toil to expose it, it was much more in the hidden. But we pulled it out, and it's at this cusp where it starts from this way